With people willing to do virtually anything for a quick buck, it should come as no surprise that there are some pretty unbelievable lawsuits that have taken place in recent history. The reasons for the suits may surprise you though as they range from the funny and the ridiculous to the downright dumb. Hey, it's Board Badger guest hosting for American Eye. Sit back, relax, and enjoy craziest lawsuits ever. Hey guys, this is American Eye today. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy that video. Number 11. It's worth a shot. Alrighty then, let's hop right into this thing. Back in 1995, there was a man named Robert Lee Brock who decided that it was a great idea to file a lawsuit against himself. That's right. Mr. Brock was serving 23 years in Virginia at the Indian Creek Correctional Center for crimes such as breaking and entering and grand larceny. Being jailed and with no source of income, Brock stated, I don't want to pay myself five million, but ask the state to pay it in my behalf. Since I can't work and I'm a ward of the state. The judge, Judge Rebecca Beach Smith, was probably not impressed with what he was proposing and dismissed the lawsuit as frivolous. Come on, give the guy a break. He's clearly insane. Just look at him. Call in the men with the white coats. Number 10. Um, what? Okay, so there's this guy who had an opinion. What was said opinion, you may ask? He believed that he bore a striking resemblance to the most famous NBA star that's ever lived, Michael Jordan. This man's name is Alan Heckard, and he decided one day back in 2006 to sue Mr. Jordan for $832 million, citing emotional suffering. Now, keep that in mind, he is like Mike in a few ways. He too is an African-American male with a shaved head. He too has a single earring in one of his ears. He too loves Bugs Bunny and all of his buddies. While we don't know about the last one, the other two are true. Mr. Heckard paid for the filing in a court of law and stated that he couldn't live a normal life because of all the attention he receives because people think he's Michael. I want to be recognized as me just like Michael's recognized as Michael. He was quoted as saying, he dropped the suit a year later without an explanation. Hey, are those white coat guys still around here somewhere? Number 9. Stella Liebeck versus Ronald McDonald. Has anyone ever burned themselves with a piping hot cup of gel? Did you blame yourself for being an idiot, or did you blame the maker of the drink that's intentionally brewed at extremely high temperatures for the best flavor? Well, Stella Liebeck, a 79-year-old woman, decided that after she dumped her coffee all over her lap in her car, giving 6% of her skin third-degree burns. It was in her best interest to sue McDonald's, as they had brewed the cup of coffee to extremely hot temperatures. The jury in the case awarded her $2.86 million which was eventually reduced to 480,000 in court. Number 8. Frickin' Fear Factor You guys remember this show, right? Joe Rogan, yes, the same Joe Rogan from the UFC, hosted challenges where things got more and more intense. Fears were faced and bugs were eaten. Ringing any bells? Well, there was one viewer who was a little less than pleased when there came a time for contestants to consume a rat smoothie, as you can see here. Austin Eitkin, a 49-year-old from Cleveland, stated that the barbaric task caused him to vomit from dizziness, made his blood pressure rise, and gave him suffering, injury, and great pain. The dude asked for $2.5 million, but claimed that he didn't care about the money and he was just trying to send a message to the TV networks. Those networks are going too far! The judge in the case dismissed the suit, called it frivolous, and warned Austin not to file an appeal. These people just keep getting crazier and crazier. They should send Joe Rogan over to have a sweet little talk with this man. Mr. Hood of the Missing Pants This one's got a whole level of crazy considering the person filing for the lawsuit was a judge himself. Roy L. Pearson Jr. took his clothes to the neighborhood dry cleaners, expecting nothing to go awry. Well, when he went back to retrieve his clothes, he learned that they had misplaced his trousers and he was not happy. He sued for $67 million, arguing that they didn't live up to their satisfaction guaranteed promise and that they didn't deliver on the same day service they said they would who's later talked into seeking just $54 million for his missing pants. But in 2007, a judge rejected his complaint. Pearson appealed and got literally nowhere because that was dismissed too. He fell farther when a review board deemed that he was unfit to continue his work as a judge himself, considering this dumb suit. And he's probably living with his mother, now out of work and out of his mind. Number 6. Get what you pay for. Just when I think these lawsuits can't get any more ridiculous. They do. At least the last guy lost something. Here someone gained an experience that she paid for and decided to sue anyways. 
Cleanthe Peters, a woman who chose, all by herself, to go through Universal Studios' Halloween Horror Nights haunted house in Orlando, sued the park because the haunted house caused her extreme fear, mental anguish, and emotional distress. Somebody come pinch my cheek so I know I'm not dreaming. She filed the suit in 2000, two years after her 1998 experience where she and her granddaughter were chased and attacked by a character with a chainsaw. She says the man continued to scare them even after they apparently slipped and fell on the floor like a bunch of babies. She eventually won 15000 in court. You get what you pay for, dang it. Number 5. Prison Pimp Would you blame a glove for your actions if you were wearing it and you punched somebody? How about if you elbowed someone and you were wearing a long sleeve shirt? Would you blame the shirt? I didn't think so. Meet Sergio Giro Cardi, a man from Portland who sued Nike for not giving an adequate warning or instruction with a pair of Air Jordans he was wearing when he stomped on a teenager who couldn't pay one of his uh, employees until his ears bled. Clardy ended up suing the footwear company for 100 million, saying they failed. They failed to warn their customers of potentially dangerous Nike and Jordan merchandise. He kidding me? This guy straight out of the barn or what? In the end, the suit was dismissed. Number four, another low hand problem. Well, I think you know who was involved in this lawsuit, or at least one of the parties. Lindsay Lohan, the red-headed, obnoxious child star, decided that she was going to sue E-Trade back in 2010 due to a Super Bowl ad she took a disliking to. The ad featured a baby by the name of Lindsay, who admitted she was a milkaholic. Lohan jumped at the chance to cry defamation, claiming the baby with her name that was some kind of aholic had to be alluding to her own issues. She claimed that the commercial used her likeness, characterization, name, and personality, as you can see here, without her permission, which she said violated her rights. The sad thing is, E-Trade decided to settle for 100 million with Miss Lohan, just trying to get rid of the pesky little fly. Just goes to show, idiocy is everywhere. But we kinda already knew about this one. Number three, boozing and losing. Have you ever seen a commercial for a product and thought if you just got whatever was being sold, your life would be like one of those using it on your TV screen? Well, for Richard Overton, Life didn't turn out how he expected when he drank his Bud Light. He tried to hold Anheuser-Busch responsible for the drink, not taking him to a fantasy land as depicted in their commercials. Come on, man, really? He sued for 10000 because he didn't wind up on a scenic tropical beach with good-looking men and women having all kinds of fun. The case was dismissed, but Overton went on and claimed that Anheuser-Busch's use of a dog in their commercials is wrong because it draws children to booze. Richard Overton, a man nobody should emulate, like ever. Number two, banking on a payday. This is one of those cases where you just wonder what in the world is somebody thinking? Or if they're thinking, or if they can even think. In 2012, a man named Todd Kirkpatrick filed a lawsuit after he was shot twice by a deputy while he was in the middle of, from roll please, robbing a bank. He believed that he was wronged and claimed that he was obnoxiously unarmed and severely shot up. He says the bill from his injuries had climbed to 300,000 and and believed he shouldn't have been the one to pay for it, as he didn't do the shooting. His case was dismissed, and Deputy Dan Scott was honored with a 2012 Law Enforcement Officer of the Year Award. How this guy thought he was going to win, we don't know. But we think it's fantastic that the guy who shot him was rewarded for his excellent work. Number one, Jackass. All right, who here is familiar with the MTV show Jackass? For those of you who don't, Jackass is a show where a bunch of guys do stunts, pranks, hurt themselves, and generally act like idiots for all laughs. Well, before the TV show, do you know what Jackass meant? Nah, not donkeys, you silly. It was a man named Robert Kraft, a man who wanted to raise awareness about drunk driving, changed his name to Jackass in 1997, and he wasn't happy when the show, by the same name, came out in 2003. He sued Viacom for 10 million. No jokes here, citing copyright infringement, defamation, and plagiarism. Ultimately, the case got dismissed, and that was that. Sheesh, some people, man. Can't even believe the reasons cited for all these crazy lawsuits. The world is truly full of crazy. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, comment on it, and subscribe to both channels for videos like this every couple of days. So what do you guys think of that video? Let us know in the comment section and be sure to subscribe for new videos every day.